do the quick intro. Yeah, so welcome back to Level Up TV at levelupgame.net. Slash Level Up TV. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Lemmings Effect versus 102, or Deliberate Murder, is 1-1. One, one. one of the third map here in the Clan Base Euro Cup 26 group stages. It's Group B, and this is a very important map. This will decide who wins between these two teams. Is it going to give 102 more of a foothold in this group and give them a chance, a much stronger chance of qualifying? Or is it going to guarantee Lemmings Effect qualification through the group? Of course, we're going in as Lemmings Effect are a new entrant into the Euro Cup against the reigning champions 102. And it is now one map a piece, one Limbus brand new map into this tournament. Not really sure who's going to be stronger at it. Let's go over the teams quickly. Gwynplaine, Kinku, Spawns and Prodex is for Lemmings Effect. And for Deliberate Murder, we've got Immortals, the roster, Pavel and Fortune. And with me is four. So, I mean, two, what I'd say are pretty close maps, despite perhaps the end score differences looking more comfortable. Yeah, for sure. The first map was a lot closer than the 40 frags difference suggested. Very close all the way through up until the last couple of sets of power-ups where the Lemmings Effect really, Excellent. really turned their game up in the last few minutes. Yeah, so that was on Purgatory. That was Lemmings Effect's map pick. And then the second map on Intervention, a classic Quake 3 map. We haven't seen that too much in many tournaments, even when it is in the map pool, but often it is. Yeah, and again, Lemmings Effect looked really good on Intervention as well, up until about the 14 and a half minute mark, where they just inexplicably failed to show up for a quad, and that clean quad pickup really turned the game around for 102. You know, they've been behind. I would almost like to say the majority of the game, perhaps, until that point, but when they surged into a lead off the back of that quad, it was no looking back for them. And they show that there's many ways to play Intervention. You don't just have to sit and control red, as Lemmings Effect did very effectively. You know, 102 played a game based off of the yellows and the rail. It was a moment by Starosta. That quad pick up the way survived it out, showing don't throw away your life in TDM when you pick up the quad. Just try to survive it as long as you can and often things will just fall your way and it's exactly what you showed there. Good, of course, good example. Even if you don't manage to help up and make some frags, just for knowledge that the other team has that you are still the quad and you are still alive somewhere, you know, that does put a certain element of fear and doubt about where you can go on the map. You know, are you gonna just suddenly take, you know, a huge shotgun or rail or rocket or whatever it might be in the back? You know, they could predict that most likely is at the red armor area, which most of them weren't, which is the area they wanted to control. So they're on their, their secondary area rather than their primary area means they're already feeling like they're a little bit down and just being a bit more defensive, not being as comfortable that side of the map. So it worked out very, very well there for 102 in the end. And it looks like we're just waiting for them to ready up. I mean, quick smoke break for. Don't approve of that, really. I don't approve of it. These are professional athletes. I don't want to see anyone smoking. <laughs> professional athletes, indeed. So Cyber oh. athletes, but athletes nonetheless. Who's your standout performer over the two maps thus far? Anybody in particular, or just a well, very on the first strong team performance? Product certainly shined, but you know, on that previous map, Starosta, his decision making in the last few minutes, I think, was spot on most of the time. Uh, he he chose to just make sure that his team were going to have a stack quad, and really did prove to be the difference in the end. But we saw some good work from Fortune as well on that map. Who often, you know, you don't you don't see too much of him, but he always seems to come out with. Well, he always plays very solidly, but he's maybe not often the headliner. Obviously, you've got a player like Pavel in the lineup, who more often than not you know, is a huge star in every game he plays. So, Limbus, brand new map for you've got the red army, you've got a single power of the quad, a very open, exposed position, reminiscent of campgrounds. Hang on, aren't you forgetting something? Wait, get into it. Two yellows, mega. Full arsenal of weapons. Oh, there you go, exactly. Every weapon is on offer here. 
gauntlet, machine gun you spawn with. You've got a shotgun, a grenade launcher, rocket launcher, lightning gun, railgun, and the plasma gun. No BFG! Maybe someday we'll see that on a TDM map. No nail gun. Of course, there are nail gun and some TDM maps. Yeah. I don't think any in the current pool, though, if I'm right. So. To get the chain gun? No chain gun either. Boxy mines? Yeah, what's the key to this map? How have we seen teams play this? Well, first thing is to say, both teams have definitely got the skill sets needed for this map. You know, this is a lot about doing damage, you know, and timing, which is a strength of 102, but, you know, maybe the aim advantage that Lemmy's Effect have will be important here. Okay, I don't even know whether it's called it an aim advantage, because, you know, 102, their combat skills are off the charts as well. Maybe more so than what, um, Lemmy's Effect, but Lemmy's Effect I think will be very dangerous in some of the railing positions on this map. You know, the kind of positions that you can sit unpressured and you know, hit some extremely impressive rail angles. And I think that will be very suited to them. Whereas 102 maybe, maybe they do have the advantage in close combat, you know, despite their ping disadvantage. And you know, that's an important aspect of this map as well. It's that term fatality used to use about himself, he's the best fighter. And that's uh, how it's sort of rate 102, they've got a very strong fighting style. Once they see the opportunity to dive in and eliminate someone, then right in there. We're going to go live then. In five, four, three, two, one. Activate. Well, kicking off the start, very unfortunate. Spawn misses out on the rocket launcher and the uh, yellow armor. But he gets himself a lightning gun and yellow armor. Good trade, I'd say. Yeah, not bad, especially with his lightning gun. Very impressive so far in these games. We've seen a lot of focus around this red armor by the teams playing it so far. It's a brand new map for this season, so teams are still working out what the best strategies are. Yeah, when you're holding this red room, I really like this position Kinker's in now. You know, even though you can see the enemy in the distance, you know, he was reluctant to immediately drop off and support because you know, that high position can be very important in stopping people getting in there shooting down into the red. Yeah, no one was going to be able to jump and steal that red away from his team. Moving in, we don't have a quad time in our time, and eh? almost none of the players know the initial quad time either. There it is. And you can Kiku make it to it. Windplane grabs, he's still on the perch, he's got to be cautious here. Yeah, we've Something seen players make the mistake sometimes of staying in the room too long, you know, trying to put out damage when often it's advisable that the quad just leaves as soon as possible. It seemed like on that occasion, 102 got forced back by his teammates, so good work there. Well, they just faded away to avoid damage. Two frags in quick succession there inside this red room. Looks like his team might be in a good position to take the red. Moving through to the rail though, it's not up. Yeah, kind of an unfortunate situation he found himself in with his quad. You know, low health, low ammo and his lightning gun. So he didn't really have the confidence to move around the map looking for a lot of frags. But, you know, important that he went to the red at least and kind of secured that for his team. Moving into this rail position, takes out two opponents with the help of teammates. Excellent. Plus two net in that exchange and control of that important rail area. Moved away from the red though, I mean, I don't know if that's still secure. Moving back in now, not able to save it from Fortune. Yeah, they just kind of overextended there, trying to look in at the lightning gun as well. I kind of like the positivity on that you picked up a few frags with the rail and then you're looking to put pressure on it, you know, the side of the map you're not planning on holding, but it, it did actually cost them the red in the end. Spawns up the bounce pad, picking up a frag with the rock. He's going to pick up another and Pavel, surely. He does do. We've got 40 seconds until the next quad. You don't really probably want to spend too much time around the quad area trying to set up now because there's so many items across the map we want to move out for. It looks like the Meg is going to be too close a time to bother waiting for for the quad, but there will be a red before it in a very good amount of time. Extremely strong shotgun work by Starosta. They're taking out two players, and when you take out two players with 20 seconds or so to go to a quad, now, those can be vital kills that uh, potentially secure the quad for your team. Ten seconds to go before the quad picks up a third on Kinku there. He's going to... Oh! Missed out on that big rocket damage. Does take out spawns though. Heavy shotgun and Prodex as well. So that's worked out so well for them. In fact, Fortune just diving in there, stealing away from Pavel. He wasn't the more stack player. He needs to back off though. Yeah, maybe trying to get too greedy looking for more damage there was a bit risky. You never know what weapons, you know, some of the... Any members turning up late might have had. Wow, the fire bubble stolen away from him. That has actually cost him the ability to dive over and grab that 25. I think he just took too much damage inside that main room, not getting out of the way quick enough. Either way, 
102R just ahead at the moment. Yeah, very small margin at this stage, of course. After the first two power ups, not much in it. They uh, have had less time on the power ups, but a power up each. Pretty even on the yellows. Red's going in favour of 102 at the moment, as are Megas. Those are the two major items. Their spawns down at the Mega. Missed out on actually grabbing it. I don't think he heard it either. But yeah, he's just run away from it. Didn't check it either, did he? Yeah. Still not been picked up. There he is, spots it. This Doesn't cost him nothing in the end, but... And we do like to see players pick these items up as soon as they spawn, if possible, because, you know, then you get to pick it up sooner rather than later again. Yeah, get some... more players who have that mega for the next squad. Sometimes you might put slight delays to sync it up so you have a good time period before the power-up pickup, the one before the power-up spawn. You don't want the item syncing up at the same time as the power-up because that really puts you out of whack. It's complete luck who gets it. Aggressively move away from Red Armour straight away. I guess he's left his teammates for that, but good, it was a good time to win over the Red. It's big take both yellows in that period of time. Yeah, so they're taking a hell of a lot of items you know, leading up to this power up. Should put them in good stead to be able to actually take this. Just eroded that lead. 102 had built up. Five seconds to go before one is coming in an excellent angle from behind. Nobody was watching it either. Pavel manages to grab the quad though. That is good saving play there. He picks it up with two health, I think. So, really big save. Because that was looking like it was fully locked down apart from Pavel with the Lemmings effect. Yeah, but despite not getting the quad, Lemmings effect, I think, is still slightly in the advantage at the moment. You know, they had really good play leading up to that power up. It took so many items. But it was a really good job by Pavel to keep that quad away from them. We're back on spawns, and from what we've seen, he's just been racing around the map. Going at those key items, going at the yellows, going at the mega. Something we saw Zyrinx doing, of course, for Sito, who looked very strong. Don't know why he's waiting around here. Has he completely missed time quad? I think they make a second quad spawning this minute instead. <laughs> well, I'm all for more power-ups on maps. Every minute, perhaps? It's debatable. Quick frag there, he's back for the yellow, he's looking in the dominant position if anybody he meets. The yeah, only thing I'm not keen on about this route is, you know, I was about to say, he's just been hit by a couple of rails, and that's why I, I kind of expect him to move towards more. You know, once he has the stack, you know, while it is a good thing to keep taking those items, you know, I'd, I'd expect him to use his stack to put more pressure on what is such an important item in the railgun. It's a very easy run route, isn't it? And you can double stack a yellow quite quickly. So he's got 100 armor now, he's got weapons. Ideally, he could just call a teammate to take over that run route and then go and use that armor to attack an area. Yeah, like this. This is the areas I'd want to see him using the stack in. 25 seconds before quad dropping down. He's surrounded by 102 players. I thought actually he did a pretty decent job considering the position he found himself in, but he was eliminated fairly rapidly. Yeah, Pavel missed his first rail, I think, and you know, if he'd hit it, maybe it'd have saved the mortal's life. <laughs> Immortal. It's ironic, isn't it? Saving an immortal's life. Pavel in a dangerous position, but he's chosen, I think, the right target there to take out. That worked out excellently for Starosta in the end. Except yeah, and the man, nice... the man who had such an important quad run on intervention. You know, this is an important quad run to try and get them closer in score because you know, 15 frag lead or so before this squad. Yeah. Sometimes you can pick up so many frags in quick succession on this map. We've seen high level squad runs, 9 frags or so, similar to something like Hidden Fortress, despite this map actually being a bigger in size. It doesn't happen on yeah. this occasion, but it does confiscate that rail away. Not just bigger in size as well, but more routes around the map as well. Yeah, I think as the map develops, we'll probably be seeing lower quad counts on the runs anyway. It's going to be a little bit more like gentle place. Sharp railgun there from Starosta. Taking the rail perhaps to overlook the quad, but no. Decides that there's more pressing matters at hand at the railgun. Yeah, again, really aggressive there. That's actually excellent work. Wrapped himself a lightning gun on top of that as well, with a nice chunk of ammo in it. It was a teammate's. Yeah, they're starting to do a good job of keeping Lemmy's effect away from that red armor. And, you know, when you keep someone away from the red, it kind of gives you more of an advantage on the red as well. Red's 12 to 6, make that 13 to 6 now. They are behind the yellows, but head on the megas, so it's working out as an, probably as an advantage. 
for 102. Securing out that rail pickup from Kinku, who has nothing to counter with, unless he has a weapon, but he just expects to go down. Seemed to survive quite a while there. Taking unnecessary machine gun damage. Red armor in the hands of Starosta as well there, and that's an excellent timing before the power-ups. In fact, that's going to work out very well for a power runner. They know the time of the red size to drop down, landed in that little gap there. Oh my god, can he hit there? Rocky doesn't quite save the quad. I think with his stack, he should have been more committed to that. I mean, you can accept taking a little bit of damage, I think, in that situation. You know, he had the stack to be able to survive, you know, being hit by a pummel or Didn't whatever he, he might have been as well, though, which would have been a. Or is he yeah, would have, ammo? I'm not sure, but if he did have a lightning gun, it certainly would have allowed him to knock the player away from the quad. So maybe a missed opportunity there, but they have closed in the score significantly now. Yeah, it looks like they got had a great run on the map just before that power up, and but I, they'll still be disappointed. I think that they didn't come away with that quad. I mean, Starosta has been running the quad nicely all night, and would have been an opportunity to tie the game up. Kinko dropping down, does just miss out on that red. Look at the heavy rocket damage he took. 102 rushing in here, good rail support, they steal away that red in fact. That really was a steal and they're paying a heavy price to Sarosta, he's kind of been the standout man. Yeah, I mean he's minus six net at the moment, the but we've seen him doing though, some isn't it? Yeah, it's important actions indeed. You see Ellie have taken over this red room again, but the timing on 102's attack was perfect last time to steal it away from them. So they're going to need to grab this one. It was a well-timed attack, but it actually has put them at a disadvantage because of the frags they lost. Oh, the Lords were dropping down there, trying to find rails. Oh, was that a double rail? Let's get caught out by Fortune. Kinku just surviving there with only four health. 25 seconds before the quad, he'll probably want to go down ideally. So he's got a reasonable level of health before the power of Sarasta blowing himself up. And one Grimplane again is managed to gather in 73 armor. Railgun hasn't got too much ammo though, so he's gonna have to hit these shots here. Misses two in a row. A third. Oh, this is an easy one as well. Oh dear. He's gonna have to hit this one. He does! And his teammate manages to grab the quad. That's a missed timing, though, I have to say, by 102, because none of them were actually in position to drop on the quad, despite all being there. No, they were fortunate that Lemon's Effect were missing their shots as well. I kind of think, though, that, again, it's an example of, you know, you saw the quad get picked up, he survived initially, but, you no, know, he was dodging and didn't take the opportunity to leave the room. Got to think quick on this map, especially. Because I think, I think the way you've got to look at it is, you know, if you stand there dodging with that many enemies in the room, you are going to die eventually. I mean, you may well die trying to leave, but, you know, there's a chance you can still survive. I'm picking up a couple of frags there. He's got red armor to his name, but not too much health now. No, he doesn't take the railgun, so he hasn't got a weapon still. And now he's got no ammo as well. It seems a bit of a waste. He does have a rocket. Needs this health because he's going to go down. Craters. Yeah, Waste of the red, unfortunately. Yeah, and he's going to be spawn fragged as well by Mortu, who only had one health himself in the end there. He they do still have the lead, of course, but you know they have to keep up the level of play that got them the lead. Yeah, 16 frags is the margin at the moment. We are in that second half of the map. It's such an intense battle these two teams are having between them. Following Immortal. Oh, gets caught out in the back by Gwynplaine, who suddenly seems to be in the action quite a lot from our point yeah, of view. I think that now gives Lemmy's Effect free rails on hand, and free rails when it's time to start defending the quad, that's a significant advantage. Gwynplaine dropping down, trying to just help out. There's so much damage, it's impressive for him. He does get caught out though, Starosta just in the back here. Can he save the day on this quad? It's a few seconds time, he's got a teammate with him, that's Pavel. Really seen too much of Pavel. Let's see, it looks like actually one or two have moved in expertly. They're gonna have to take it though, because again, getting caught in the back. Pavel somehow. So lucky I, that he hit that shot because I, he'd already just about dodged a rocket. He was about a second away from getting a rocket right in his back. How on earth did he hit that shot? I'm gonna put that down to amazing skill. No doubt about it. Century now. Just nice. 
to maybe bring us back 15 frags to the margin. Do a couple of frags here. Can see them on the ascendancy again. I think they missed out on the red grab actually. Yeah, in the hands of Gwynplaine again. He seems to be running that red expert at the moment. And just when you think they were going to make inroads into that scoreline. Yeah, I mean. Lemon's effect has still retained good control of this area, so you know, despite not having the quad, you know, they're still able to keep themselves in the game. Because you know, make, mis make no mistake, a good quad run, and it might not have even the score up, but it would set themselves up with map control to actually start looking to bring the game back. Well, there's two red stack players there. They have, and if you ever let a team get to that level of stack. You you could be in trouble. It didn't actually pay much of a price for that though. And Gunplane is the only survivor out of those two players having to back off. But the score difference is 19 now. Still a very healthy lead. It's a kind of lead where perhaps they, they can still afford to make a mistake if it happens. You know, it won't cost them the game. But well, they'll, hope, they'll be hoping they don't make any mistakes. Three quads left, and Ellie, I say, are in a vulnerable position on this power here. They come here early. Don't no one looks like, particularly yeah, strong. They don't look like they've got particularly good weapons. They just cycle around them a bit. Windplane at the back does catch out Sir Rosta running up the back, but he's only got 24 health after that heavy shotgun. Now Pavel diving in, doesn't get the frag, but Immortal looks like he could be pretty good for this power up. Oh, they're just diving on it again. Steal it away. And actually, Prodex is going to escape with that one. And he's got the opportunity to actually get a pretty decent run on now. Oh! That rocket. Just clipping him and pinging him over. It didn't do as much damage as he potentially could have. It's very aggressive. Fortune in that dominant position of high. 80% rel. Only two impressives though, not too many shots for him. It's like they've had a fair amount of focus on the rail though, and as the map's got on, I feel like 102 have focused too much on the rail, and st started forgetting that if they just deny the reds away from Lemmy's effect, that's going to have more of an impact. Yeah, because they had that advantage of red pickups earlier in the game, and actually been taken over now by Lemmy's effect. 18 to 17 is the difference, but probably in the last 10 minutes of play, that advantage is significantly with Lemmy's effect. Oh, Fortune trying to hit that rail shot. His opponent ran out of ammo as well there. It really is quite a difference now, though. The frags. It is. 27 frags with two quads remaining. It certainly can be done, but it's a lot to ask. Lemmy's effect are playing well as well. You know, you've know, seen that even if even if uh, 102 take Excellent. the quads and have decent runs, that's not necessarily enough to impact the score significantly. That is the last red before the power up, effectively, by Pordex. He's grabbed it, he's still got a fair chunk of it, shotgun in hand. He's got a rail as well. Yeah, he may not even try and overcommit to this quad. He might just sit himself in a position like this and look to hit his rails. Well, he's really caused one or two some serious issues there. He should really have taken Pavel out. He'll be disappointed with himself there. And just diving into that rocket as well, but it's up for grabs, and King Kuh takes it. He is fragged, but there's only one quad left now, Vor. There is, and it's still 25 frags of difference, and you have to say that's probably looking like a victory here for Lemmings Effect. Like, it's not definitely over yet, but very difficult to see them bringing this back. Well, they're going to have to really switch it on 102, put the pressure on, and just hope that Lemmings Effect crumble under the pressure. So the form under pressure themselves, so expert and in the previous campaign, especially that final deciding map. But... 102, gonna need something special here. The Rasta running around, misses all his rockets there, they're eventually taking out Kinku. He seems to spend so much time in these strange, like, little corridors, interconnected corridors, that I'm not necessarily sure the best places to take up positions. You know, they might seem like decent positions to counter, but they haven't got any items in and. It just kind of looks like the sort of position you're standing when you're not sure on the timings of certain things. Like, is rail coming up? Then maybe it's a slightly decent position, but you know, if it, rail's not up, then you're not really doing much. Especially as we know that that run for the yellows underground, just below that area, is. So... Yeah, you think he's perhaps 
you know, we've seen players running that route for at least a bit. We've seen spawns earlier in the game running that route. When, you know, you think if you are 102, you're going to try and disrupt that run for whoever's trying to make it. Just outnumbered again at the red armor by Lemmings Effects. Thruster was the only guy there working for it. And just being punished by the Lemmings Effect team. Products just hitting all his shots. They're 58% rail for him. They just need to play this rare, this quad out, you know, effectively. But two kills there from Prodex. That's probably enough to secure it. Only a few seconds to go. They look like they're in the dominant position for it. Thrust steals it that time, but final quad. Final minute, 50 seconds remaining. It looks like 102 are going to have a lot more work to do in the group to qualify. Now we've going to have two losses to their name. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought that before the campaign started? Two losses after three games? That's disastrous for them. I just didn't expect that. They are the reigning champions, and these are the newcomers. Lemmings Effect. Yeah, first season in the Euro Cup for them. It was controversial last season when they weren't you know, given a place in it. And they're certainly proving that they are worthy of one. Top of the group, three wins from three, assured now of a place in the knockout stages. Astonishing performance by Lemmings Effect then as they take it two to one on maps over Deliberate Murder, putting themselves in prime position to win this Group B. That's really incredible play from Lemmings Effect. Very impressive performance. Products again, I think, with the highest damage. I think he had every map the highest damage, didn't he? He's certainly the star man on the first map, Purgatory, and again on here, on Nimbus.